Hi, I'm Dr. CJ Schlick, Stock Assessment Scientist for the North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries. Today I will be discussing the stock assessment process, including the type of data needed for assessment, important considerations taken into account when developing the models, and the type of outputs that are useful for management. Before digging into stock assessments, here are a few terms that will be commonly used throughout the presentation that are important to define as they are used in our stock assessment process. A unit fish stock is a group of fish of the same species that live in the same geographical area and mix enough to breed with one another when mature. Ideally, the unit stock is the same as a biological stock, however, fish populations do not adhere to political boundaries. So the unit stock may be defined by the agency or organization responsible for the species management. Natural mortality is the rate at which fish die of natural causes. This is denoted by a capital N. In fisheries, natural mortality can be defined as the removal of fish from the stock due to causes other than fishing. It is strongly related to the lifespan of the fish, and it tends to decrease with increasing age, bio, body mass, and length. Natural mortality rates can vary among species and within the species. These rates vary by sex, density, food availability, time, space, and other factors. Natural mortality occurs regardless of whether fishing is or isn't occurring. Fishing mortality is also a rate and is represented by the letter F. It is the rate at which fish are removed from, due to fishing activities. Fishing mortality is strongly related to fishing gear and varies by sex, age, time, space, and other factors. Fishing mortality is crucial in describing and understanding population dynamics of species under harvesting. Recruitment is the addition of individuals through natural reproduction. I do want to note that recruitment is based on the definition of the unit stock and many times will be based on what, when fish are available to the fishery rather than the young of the year or those born in that year. Fish stocks can change over time due to mortality, individual growth, and reproduction. These factors are heavily influenced by environmental conditions such as temperature, habitat availability, food availability, weather conditions, water flow, and other environmental factors. So regardless of fishing activity, fish stocks will change through time. Understanding these changes through times, as well as fishing impacts to the stocks, are the basis of stock assessment. A stock assessment is a process of compiling and evaluating data, analyzing and interpreting results, then reviewing and presenting demographic information for determining the effects of fishing on fish populations. In fisheries, determining stock status means estimating one or more biological characteristics of the stock, such as abundance or biomass, and com comparing estimated values of, to reference values that define desirable conditions. Stock assessments are the primary tools used by managers to assist in determining the status of stocks and developing appropriate management measures to ensure the long-term viability of stocks. Formal process for stock assessments at the North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries consists of a series of workshops, which include a formal external peer review process. So stock assessments can give us information about how fish are in the stock, whether or not the stock is sustainable, how many fish can be removed through fishing practices while remaining sustainable, and how future abundance and catch can be affected by various management options. I do want to stress that our current conditions are always compared to reference values of a design, defined desirable stock. The stock assessment steps are simple in concept with three main steps, data collection, model development, and tools produced from the model for management use. The data types that go into a model are termed the ABCs of stock assessment by NOAA Fisheries. The abundance is the relative index of the stock in number or weight. The biology is the additional information about a species such as growth, maturity, migration, natural mortality, etc. Then catch is the amount of stock removed through commercial or recreational fishing. Catch also includes landings, discards, bycatch, and other removal types. If you have reliable information on other significant sources of removals like predation, red tine, impingement, and entrainment, these are also included in the data types. The basic data needs for these models are the migration or movement of fish, the landings and harvest of information including bycatch and discards, the survey indices from independent studies to give you information about the population without impact from regulations and industry selectivities, the natural mortality rates, growth rates, and maturity information about the species. 
These data needs are fulfilled by four primary data sources. Our fishery dependent sources are recreational and commercial fisheries data. The fisheries independent are the numerous surveys conducted by the North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries and other agencies throughout the region, but are separate from the recreational and commercial fisheries information. Biological data can be pulled from the first two data sources, but are additional information about the species other than catch, such as agent length, maturity schedules, diets, genetics, and other information. We also have specified tagging studies that are conducted to provide more information about the population on migration and mortality. Each data source is thoroughly evaluated by scientists as part of the stock assessment process. A commonly used analogy in stock assessments is to think of the stock like your bank account. You have an account at time one with some level of income being put in and then some level of expenses leaving. This information allows you to estimate your account at time two. Stocks are similar with recruitment being equal to your income and mortality being equal to your expenses. As long as recruitment is greater than your mortality, your population should grow. However, with fish, st fish stocks, this is a little more difficult. You may or may not have migration moving in and out of the stock, but this depends on your definition of the stock. More importantly in this example is the idea of carrying capacity. Your bank account has a potential for unlimited growth, but the fish population does not. So a better analogy would be a piggy bank. At some point in time, the bank will not be able to hold any more coins. The same is true of the population, and this is the carrying capacity of the environment. So at some point in time, the population will be too big for the environment. Either there is not enough available habitat or prey or some other factors that will limit how big the population can get. And remember, stocks are impacted by environmental variables. So is the carrying capacity. For example, if prey availability controls how many there are in a stock, anything that impacts the prey population, such as temperature or water flow, will impact the size of the stock. This means your carrying capacity will change from year to year based on the environmental variables. Scientists try to take as much of this into account as possible in the stock assessments. Stock assessments are captured through a multitude of different models. One of my favorite quotes is from George Box, essentially all models are wrong, but some are useful. His meaning was that models are a simplified representation of a complex process. It is impossible to characterize everything that will impact these po populations. However, we can put in enough information to try to get to the point we want to look into. We can answer some of the questions that we pose in stock assessment processes. Even if our models are a simplified representation, please remember simplified does not necessarily mean simple. These mathematical equations depicted on the screen are real equations used in stock assessment models and can be quite difficult or cumbersome with multiple variables to take into consideration. The models used in stock assessment process range in complexity. Selecting an appropriate model is a trade-off between the biological realism offered by more complex models versus the parsimony or the availability of a few parameters offered by simpler approaches. Our simple models could be types of index-only models or trend analyses, and these scale up in complexity to statistical catch-at-age models and fully integrated models. The available data largely determines the model that can be considered as more realistic models or more complex models require significantly more data. Not only does the amount of your data impact the model, but the quality of the data does as well. You can have a great data set with a long time series, but if it's on the wrong species, it won't provide any information for your stock assessment. Similarly, you can have a good data set on your species, but if it only runs two years, it will not be very informative for the model. All of this must be taken into account when developing the stock assessment model, as well as the statistics to compare the model, as this will impact your confidence in your process. I do want to note there are a variety of software programs that are used to develop these models. Stock synthesis is the most common one you will hear at the North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries, but you'll also hear a multitude of other models throughout fisheries management. A few common ones are the ASAP or the Age Structure Assessment Program, the BAM, which is the Beaufort assessment model, or the WAM, which is the Woods Hole assessment model. There are a few other examples you will hear. And all of these are similar statistical packages running on the same mathematical equations. They're just different computer programs with the same structures doing the same thing, even though a few of the programs have a few more bells and whistles. A few important considerations when developing the model are, what is the unit stock, as in how big or how small is it, 
Are you incorporating the entire unit or do you need to take migration into account? Are all removals included or is there a major fishery source, bycatch, discard, or other mortality rate that needs to be taken into account? Are other important data sources available and included, such as from outside agencies? Is the selected model appropriate for the available data? So are the mathematics you're using actually going to give you the answers you are aiming for at the end of your model? Once the model is developed, there are several elements that can be produced that are useful management tools. A few of the common goals are predicted values, fishing mortality, and population size, both of which are developed to reference points that are defined before model development. There are two main reference points used by the North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries. The first is the management reference point, also termed the target, and is the point that indicates the desired stock state. The second is the biological reference point, or termed threshold, and that is the boundary of an undesirable stock condition. The threshold are the limits that the Fisheries Reform Act discuss, which trigger the population status as overfished or undergoing overfishing. Reference points are established before assessment model is developed. The most common reference points are defined in terms of population size and fishing mortality. These reference points are decided based on data-driven life history traits. We do extensive literature reviews to ensure we have the most up-to-date information. Also, model considerations or limitations are taken into account to determine if the model developed can provide the intended information. Management needs are also taken into consideration when discussing the reference points used. So these reference points are set for a predetermined allowable population size and fishing mortality. When the population size goes below the set threshold, the population is overfished. When the fishing mortality is greater than the set threshold, the population is undergoing overfishing. So here is an example of the spawning stock biomass figure developed from a stock assessment model. We use spawning stock biomass to represent the population available to spawn, and we look at it through time to determine if the stock is above or below the threshold. In this example, all of the population is above the threshold or the red line, so the population is not overfished. And actually, it is always above the green dotted line, indicating we are always above the desired state. Similarly, we commonly graph the fishing mortality rate through time, which in this example always stays below the fishing, fishing mortality rate threshold. Thus, the population does not experience overfishing throughout this timeline. So to give you an idea of the division's stock assessment process, here's an overview of our timeline. We break most of our stages into workshops to have multiple scientists working on providing the best available scientific information. The first step is to gather data and stakeholder input which are done over time through multiple programs and processes. At the start of a stock assessment, a team is formed and a planning workshop is scheduled. At the planning workshop, the team will define the unit stock, standardize the data summaries, define the timeline, and identify the available programs that contain the data of interest for the stock assessment. The second workshop in our process is the data workshop. This is where the data are compiled into one location and critically evaluated for use within the stock assessment process. The methods workshop is next. This is where the methods for analysis and model development are determined, including which model and model software will be utilized. Also, this is the point of where the stock status criteria are defined. So this targets and thresholds we discussed before are determined at this point based on the available information on the species, management, and other considerations. The assessment workshop happens several months after the methods workshop, as the model is developed by the stock assessment personnel in between these two workshops. The assessment workshop is the point when the model is initially examined by the Dis Division of Marine Fisheries staff to identify major uncertainties, so anything that needs to be reassessed for the model, examine the balance between realism and model fit, as well as determine the species status compared to the earlier defined reference points. Some additional statistics to examine the model are also discussed in this meeting. When the stock assessment model has been approved by the Division of Marine Fisheries team, it is sent to a panel of external experts to review in a peer-reviewed workshop. 
these experts are species, modeling, or other field-appropriate experts outside of the Division of Marine Fisheries that discuss the suitability of the science, the scientific method, and the appropriateness of the conclusions from the assessment. Once the stock assessment has been approved by the peer-reviewed team for management use, it actually goes back to a larger panel of Division of Marine Fisheries staff, which includes the director and higher management. This panel decides if the stock assessment is appropriate for management within the state. The stock assessment is then presented to the Marine Fishery Commission and used to inform management for the fishery management plan. The data used in the assessment is reviewed each year as part of the Fishery Management Plan Annual Review, which is presented to the Marine Fishery Commission each August and available on the Division of Marine Fisheries Managing the Fisheries website. This presentation provides a lot of information about the stock assessment process specific to North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries. If you have any questions about our stock assessment process or our fisheries, feel free to reach out to our staff. The latest stock assessments conducted within North Carolina can be found on our website under the Fishery Management Information page for each species, along with contacts for our species lead biologists. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.